Earlier this year, we told you how Nebraska Extension agronomist Roger Elmore and other Extension personnel monitored corn plants after hail events in 2014. Roger explained that bacteria invaded plants that otherwise may have survived with growing points below ground. At last week's crop production clinic, we saw how UNL staff, including graduate student Justin McMicken, are now manually hailing corn in order to learn more about what could happen after plants suffer damage. We're looking at early season uh, hail damage in corn. And so basically anything before V6, really when the growing point comes above the ground, is considered okay for hail. So if we get hail damage during that period, if there's not stand loss in the field, if we're not killing off plants, likely that field's okay. And so the research we're conducting that's behind me is basically we're taking a simulated hail machine out and we're blowing down corn and then we're monitoring its response over time, seven and 14 days, using a video evaluation. Now, uh, what we're also doing is we're uh, piggybacking some research that Dr. Elmore's done the previous year, which is uh, they went around to 14 locations within Nebraska and other states uh, that were hailed naturally. And so uh, they tracked individual plants through as far as their response over time and then took tasseling notes and silking notes and the yield potential of those plants. And what we found is that not all plants are equal when it comes to hail. So depending on the level of damage, we may see a different response as, as far as that plant's productivity. And that's what you're trying to isolate? That's what we're trying to isolate. So we, we've taken that, this simulated hail machine, which is uh, as close as we can get uh, to the real event, and we're applying it to V3, V4 corn, which should be okay. And then uh, we're tracking that response over time, as well as the yield potential at the end of the season. So this is a massive study. It's gonna be 19,300 plants evaluated when we're done. We don't know if we'll take them all to yield, but it'll certainly give us a clearer picture as far as, okay, stand loss is one part of the equation. What about the actual damage of the remaining plants that are in the field? Are you assessing right away or a few days after? Yeah, so we don't want to assess plants right away. And that's the toughest thing for a grower, I think, is he gets hail in his field and you know time is ticking. It's May, he's got to get back in that field if he's going to replant as soon as possible. Every day that goes by is a yield loss for him in his eyes if he's going to replant. And so uh, really, you know, seven days is kind of the minimum. And what we've done today as part of this event is kind of show people the period over time. You know, we've got seven days since we hailed. We've got 21 days we, since we've hailed. And so it gives them a chance to see, okay, if we make a decision, what might that decision look like? And in, in fact, today, even regardless of the extreme amount of damage that we have out there, there's no replant decision needed. You know, we dropped from a 32,000 uh, plants per acre to sometimes 19 to 20,000. That's still not enough for replant. That's only, you know, 15 to 18% yield loss on those plants. So. You mentioned what Roger Elmore was doing based off of last year's hail damage, uh, specifically in Euling. One of the components of that was disease. Are you also looking at that in these studies? We do. So that's the third component to our field study is Goss's wilt, you know, which is a bacterial pathogen that commonly shows up in, in cornfields, especially if they've had hail damage or any kind of sand blowing damage, anything that wounds those plants and exposes them to a bacterial pathogen that could get in. And uh, we're going out and we're hailing and then we're immediately applying that bacterial pathogen to the top, just using a, a sprayer. And that, if we waited any period of time at all, those plants would start to heal up. And in fact, we'd have a hard time getting disease. And if you walk through the plots behind me, you'll see some have a lot of damage and others don't. And really that might, might be attributed to the environmental conditions that follow uh, our study. And so the last one we've done here, we did in the evening, and that's more realistic to a hail event. And so likely if we're gonna see damage, it's gonna be far greater in that one. Cool conditions all night long gives that bacteria time to establish.